Hi guys, how y'all doing today? Another day closer to the impending doom of my social life. AKA, another day closer to Deep Woken. Whilst the game is still around the corner, I have plenty of speculations and theories on the game and would like to share them with you. As they all seem pretty interesting enough and worth to be talked about even right before release. Talking on the behalf of places that us players fear the most and what the fuck could be their reasoning for existence, and territory we haven't really gotten much info about. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my depths and what resides within theory. Just recently, Rack had told us about the dangerous location, the Void Sea. Now from the name itself and the information he told us about it, this place is going to be deadly, okay? Like, that big ass deadly enforcer but sea monsters. Why are they in the first place and why would we want to go fight them? Now but what if I told you there was more to the Void Sea than just deadly sea monsters? My thoughts are that there is a whirlpool, shrine, portal, or some sort of entrance that leads you down into the depths that is at the Void Sea. Because in the info document, Raguzer posted an image saying this, I'll have to make my way over to the shrine. It's the only way to get back to that place. These shrines are an important link between life and death. Making use of them will prove useful to world travelers. And I know that that was out of pocket for me to say. But if you think about it, the depths means deep down, like literally the word depths, and the void and voicey meaning a completely empty space, or black dark void. And looking at clips of people being in the depths like Agamatsu, that place is dark, not only visually, but physically. So what if the voicey is the entrance to go to the depths willingly? Now in other theories covering the wiping system, we can speculate and say that once you die a certain amount of times, you get sent off to the depths which is where your fate is decided, whether you live and escape or die trying. And when we see Agamatsu in the depths, he is running for his life from some sort of shark monster, and also gets destroyed by the enforcer, implying that the depths is a very hard place to survive in and is very brutal on you. They also wouldn't make us want to willingly die just to go to the depths, that's just cheesy. So there has to be another way, meaning that there is a way to travel between both worlds with the use of shrines. So you may have been wondering, why the fuck would you want to willingly go to the depths? And my answer is, the depths is the in-game content. They did not make the depths half the size of Gaia for nothing. Same with Rag and everyone being so distant from that topic, and strict on what gets released about the depths, because that is where the in-game content resides. They didn't add the Enforcer, crazy monsters, and what seems to be a very harsh environment there, just to be feared and ran away from. We have to overcome the underworld, the depths, the deep, meaning that there is a way to travel between both worlds with use of shrines. And how I know that the depths is a smaller world on the info dock is because the larger one is the Etrian Luminate, which is the mainland, and the depths seeming otherworldly, underwater themed, and just has a lot of content to it. How I like to compare them is the Etrian Sea being life and the depths being death, and basically every meaning, because when you die on your last life, in the Atrian Luminate, your soul gets sent to the depths. With also the help of Voxus's lore theory video, he talks about what games and animes Deep Woken takes inspiration from. Same with sporadic speculation on how the islands were brought about. These two videos include a lot of lore theory ideas based on the sea and what resides within. As both these videos are over a year old, lore can still be a very flexible topic, and these videos still do have a lot of meaning and valid points. As the old game's name was Drowned Gods, very sea theme related, and Deep Woken still having some relation to the sea just by its name, as the map is mainly water and islands meaning below is only water, aka the depths, depths of the sea, which is deep down. And if you take a look at these videos, they revolve a lot around where this trouble and the islands come from. Sporadic's theory and Vox's assault and sanctuary Deep Woken relation speculation all talk about the sea being the core problem and origin of evil only making sense for the entrance to the depths to be the sea itself, at a dangerous location that's hard to pass through, the Void Sea, meaning the depths is located deep under the sea and the abyss which is the core of evil, where your will decides your fate. Take a look at this clip in Voxus's video. Another topic that needs to be covered in terms of comparing the two games are the creatures that exist deep in the sea. In some, there are beings called Kraken, which are considered as ancient sea demons. Though regardless, while salt may have the Kraken, we must ask, what creatures lurk within the Etrian Sea? What lies past the surface of the water? 
and prowls deep in the abyss. Whatever exists in the deep reaches of the Etrian Sea is possibly similar to that of the Kraken, as both are eldritch in origin and are directly tied to the sea. Now from what we can take away from this part of his video, he explains to us in Psalm Sanctuary there are beings called the Kraken, which are considered as ancient sea demons that exist deep in the sea. Now the only thing that was missing was a lack of information on what sea monsters roam deep within the depths within Deep Woken. Now I don't know if you guys know, but the Kraken from Salt and Sanctuary is the Deep Woken's group profile picture, and has been for a long ass time, which from this tells us they most definitely take and have taken heavy inspiration from the Salt and Sanctuary's game and the lore, and proves the old theories are still valid, but more proof to its relation to Salt and Sanctuary is that the Kraken heavily relates to the Enforcer in Deep Oaken. The resemblance is crazy. If you put them side by side, red glowing eyes, massive weapons, each being some sort of axe, not to mention how giant they are to the player, their crazily armor and body resemblance, the Kraken wielding his giant axe with one hand, with sea urchin spiky armor like skin, and the Enforcer from what we've seen also wielding his giant axe with one hand, with also spiky dark armor, and listen to this, the Kraken's purpose in the game Salt and Sanctuary. A Kraken, in its most common form, creatures like these once had a name, but sailors so feared, possibly conjuring one by speaking its name, that referring to them as simply the Deep became widespread. Whatever their true name is, it has since been lost to the Deep Dark Sea, so they are also called the Deep Ones in other references. A Kraken are a type of monster native to the sea having killed many sailors and sent them to the island, who are reborn through salt on the island. As said in Voxus' theory, and I quote, This could be similarly compared to how one would appear within the many islands of the Etrian Sea, and, however those that exist within the Etrian Islands are not reborn through salt, they are brought back through their own will or the will of the sea. While he proceeds to wonder what creatures lurk within the Etrian Sea, that would be the ones responsible for existence in the Etrian Numinant. When Salt and Sanctuary has a Kraken, I think I have the answer. There are forgotten gods in Salt and Sanctuary. Gods in the game need worship slash believers, but if they stop receiving it, they become monsters and chaotic versions of themselves, twisted and demented souls. And Deep Oaken's old name used to be Drowned Gods, kinda like the forgotten gods in the game, because drowned could be interpreted as forgotten because when something is drowned, it is usually forgotten. And those gods that are now chaotic and monsters are known as the Kraken, and in Deep Woken are known as the Enforcer, the Shark Sea Monster, and all the monsters and deadly creatures that reside within the depths, which were all once gods and are now drowned gods, forgotten, left behind in the deep, dark abyss, torture souls, wreaking havoc and seeking revenge on those who are responsible which overall means the depths is where all the souls go to be reborn by the will of the sea. As seen in Raguza's stream, when he is on his last life in the Etrian Luminant, his soul lifts from his body, which only means it got sent to the depths. And since the depths is sea themed with sea monsters, and if you look at the clip of Agamatsu running from something, you can then see that air bubbles are coming from his character, which does confirm that the depths is underwater themed, with also coral like trees, blue health bars, dark blue themed atmosphere, shark sea monsters, and the enforcer that in every way relates to the kraken and salt, residing deep in the depths. All of those monsters in the depths itself is the will of the sea, the core, where all souls are sent to decide their fate, where it all depends on your actions and your will. We wipe by the challenges the sea faces us with, aka the sea's will, or live to escape through the shrine and one day return willingly to face the drowned gods to take their powers hidden within the depths. The resemblance of Salt and Sanctuary to Deep Logan is insane. I would definitely like to hear your takes on this and feedback as it is greatly appreciated. I think the Deep Logan lore and game will be like no other and can't wait to be a part of the experience. I would also like to shout out Voxus and Sporadic for their crazy video on the lore of the game and Sendo for his wiping theory with how he pieced up how wiping works as it inspired and helped me piece up this crazy theory. Also thank you to Shadi for helping me put together some parts of this theory as well. If you guys want me to go and explore deeper in the lore, let me know as I'll be working on more videos like this. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.